Okay, so in this problem, uh, I want to find the internal loadings uh, at point D, as shown here. Now, the first thing I need to do is go through and figure out the um, reactions, right? So I've got a roller at A, pin at B, and then I'm fixed over at C. So what I think I'll start by doing is drawing a free body diagram where I've got a over here, I've got uh, BX and BY over here, right? Uh, and then <coughs> I can represent that distributed load as a point load, which will be two feet from the right side here, one third of the way over, and it's going to be one half, twelve by 1.5 is the amount of that load. So that's my first piece. Then my second piece is over here where I've got uh, the same BX and BY. I just use Newton's third law to flip those around, right? Equal and opposite reaction. Then I've got CY, CX, and then I have basically a moment at C with a, a 3 right there. Now, starting over on the left side, which is really all I'm looking for. If I can find A, I should be good to go. Okay. So first things first on this guy, I sum the forces in the x direction, and I find that Bx equals 0. So essentially, that X component uh, of the pin joint goes away. So now I'm just left with A and BY, right? So I can sum the moments, sum the forces to find both of those. I'm really only looking for A. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sum the moments about B, okay? And I'm going to get, um, oh, not two away, excuse me. That should be four. I, it's um, one third of 12 feet, not one third of six feet. So that number should be a four, actually. So I'm going to take 4 times, and that's going to wind up to be 9, right? So it's 6 times 1 and a half. Um, so it's going to be 4 times 9. That is the moment of the distributed load, about point B. And then I'm going to have negative 12 times A, because 12 feet over, and I've got my A there. Okay. So from that, I can find that A actually equals 3. Okay, and I could go through, I could easily find that BY is 6, and then I could use that to help me find CY in the moment at C. But again, since I'm only looking at what's going on at D, and now that I know A, I should have what I need to do. So to find that internal moment at D, or internal loads at D, I'm going to make a cut right at D, and I can draw either side of the um, the beam. I'm going to draw the left side because I have A over there. I've got the distributed triangle load that I've got over there. So I'll go ahead and draw this guy over here. And again, I've got A, which I just calculated to be 3, acting upward. Okay. I've got the dis distributed load. Let me go ahead and kind of draw it in there. So this is going to be 0.75 high now because it's halfway of the 1.5. So I can redraw this guy. Now this guy will be two feet away and it's going to be um, one half now this one will be six times 0 0.75 because the base is six now cutting it at D and then the height is 0 0.75 as opposed to 12 and 1.5 for the whole beam okay and then at point D I have the normal force at D the shear force at D and the bending moment at D. And what I can do here is I can sum the forces in X, Y, Z, um, X and Y, and then the moment to find each one of these. So I can start by summing the forces in the X direction. And basically, I'm going to have the normal force at D equals zero. Okay, so that is my first answer. It's the only thing in the x direction. So there it is. There is no normal force at D. Now I will sum the uh, forces in the y direction. So I have 3 going up and minus 
which is the 1 half times 6 times 0 0.75. And then I have the shear at D acting downward. Therefore, that shear at D equals 0 0.75, and this is going to be in kips, because all my forces are in kips here. Kips, again, is 1,000 pounds, in case you've forgotten. Okay, And then I'll go ahead and sum the moments. I always sum the moments where I cut it. Uh, it just gets rid of those unknown, well, now they're known, but ultimately, usually unknown normal and shear forces. So I'm going to sum the moments about D. I don't want to forget to include the mom the internal bending moment at D, so I put that in there uh, as so. And then I've got a positive for the distributed load. It's 2 times 2.25. That's creating a positive moment. And then I've got a negative, and that'll be 6 times 3. Okay. So from that, I can find that the bending moment at D, the internal bending moment, is 13.5, and this will be kip feet, since that's what all my units are in. Okay. So again, most mechanics and materials problems start by finding internal loads. So this is just a rehash on doing that. So again, you find your reaction forces, you cut at where you want to figure out what those internal loads are, which expose the shear, normal, and bending moment, and then you use your statics equation uh, to solve those.